Hello everybody. Today we're going to set up an SSH tunnel to Redshift using dBeaver. Uh, this is a more secure connection with our Redshift cluster being in a VPC within a private subnet. Uh, we're going to create an EC2 instance that will be in a public subnet within the same VPC and that's what will be the bastion host that we'll SSH tunnel into. Uh, so this has a bit more steps and is a little bit more involved um, and I'll just kind of go through each one of these steps and show you how to set this up. Uh, one prerequisite is just to have dBeaver installed and I'll provide a link for where you can download that in the description of this video. So we're in the console here, uh, our AWS console. You're going to want to go to VPC. Uh, and you're going to create a VPC. I'm just going to call mine Redshift VPC. Uh, you're going to want to allocate a certain CIDR block. I'll just do as small as possible here. All right, so now we have our Redshift VPC. Uh, next step we're going to want to do is let's create a couple um, route tables. Um, so we'll use this one, make it our Redshift public route table. Uh, we'll create another route table, Redshift private route table. And we'll put that under the Redshift VPC. All right, now we have our two route tables. We're going to go ahead and um, create two subnets. We'll call this the Redshift public subnet. Put that in the Redshift VPC, no preference. And we will set that amount of center block. All right, we're going to create the other one, Redshift private. Subnet, put that also as well in the Redshift VPC. And this center block will make starting at 16 there. Now we have our two subnets. We're also going to want to create an internet gateway. Um, just create internet gateway here. We'll call this Redshift IGW. Create internet gateway. We will attach this to our VPC. Shift VPC. We'll create a NAT gateway. Status deleted. Create NAT gateway. We'll put this in our public subnet. Allocate an IP for that, and we will create our net gateway. Close. Um, then we're going to go to the route table. We'll go to our public route table. Go to routes, edit route. We're going to add a route to our internet gateway. Um, just open that up to the internet. And then in our private, we're going to add another route, and this time to our NAT gateway. Open that up. Just going to make sure that that's private. 0A2F is the one I'm indeed looking for. 0A2F, OK. So now we have that set up. The next thing we're going to want to do is set up a couple of security groups. So we'll create our Redshift public security group. And that's exactly what we want, uh, SSH tunnel. Um, we want that in our VPC. We're going to add an inbound rule. We're going to do SSH, which is port 22. And we'll do my IP, and that's all we need. 
actually we'll go back to that security group. Um, edit inbound rules. We're just going to add one more here. All traffic for the security group itself. Rules. All right, we'll create another security group. Call this Redshift Private SG. connection to redshift cluster. Add an inbound rule. This time we'll make it 5439 and we will allow that for the public security group. Create that. All right, we have our security groups created. We have our subnet. Um, let's go to EC2 now. The security group should show up here in the EC2. We're going to create a key pair. We'll call this Redshift Key Pair. PEM. Let's save that. I'm going to go to Instances. Terminated. We'll launch an instance here. T2 micro. Over here, I'm going to choose the Redshift VPC. And then the subnet, you want to make sure it's your public set subnet. And you also want to enable a public IP. Storage, tags, security group. We're going to choose the existing security group, the public security group. View and launch. Launch that, and we'll choose the Redshift key pair. Launch instance. All right, while that launches, we will go to Redshift. You're gonna want to go to your config over here and go to subnet groups. We're gonna create a cluster subnet group. Um, shift private subnet. Choose our Redshift VPC, and we'll add that. Choose a subnet. We're going to choose, let's just double check and make sure we choose the right subnet here. So our private subnet has the CIDR block of 16 uh, with 08827. So we'll see that 08827. We want to choose that subnet. And then there we go, create our cluster subnet group there. Now we're going to go to clusters and we're going to create a cluster. I'm just going to leave the default name DC2 large. Um, let's just show password. Calls default hashtag 123 exclamation point. Um, then we're not going to use the default. Well, let's see, why is that not letting me? DC2, it shift. DC2, cluster permissions, that's fine. So, yeah, we can't even use the default anyway because I don't have a default VPC. So, we have our Redshift VPC. We're going to choose the Redshift Private Security Group. Um, cluster subnet group one, the one that we just made, don't have a preference for availability zone. We'll just enable enhanced BPC routing. Just one thing to note, when this is enabled, you can't use the query editor that comes with Redshift. Um, we're also not gonna make that publicly accessible. And then everything else, we're just gonna leave default, create the cluster. I'm gonna pause the video here and just wait till the cluster gets created. Okay, so my cluster is available now. I'm going to go to the EC2 instance and I'm just going to copy this um, IPv4 public IP. Then we're going to go to dBeaver. Um, we're going to go to new connection here. We're going to select Redshift. Um, and we're just going to first go to SSH, use SSH tunnel. 
we'll put in that public IP that just copied. Uh, and then you're going to want to put EC2 user for the username. We'll use public key for the authentication method. And you're going to want to find your Redshift key pair that you created. And let's just test that. All right, so we're that connected fine. Then we're going to want to actually go to back to main. Now here you're going to go back to your Redshift cluster. Go into your Redshift cluster, go to properties. We'll copy this endpoint right here. Endpoint copied. Um, paste that in. You're going to want to remove uh, your database and port number. You can put the database right there. AWS user, exclamation point. And let's test that connection. And that connected. All right, so we'll just press finish and then you can kind of see if this works. Uh, let's just do that again. Create table. Uh, let's do that again. Dev public. I was wondering what I wasn't doing. Auto completion. Dev public, and we'll call it shoes. Again, do uh, shoe type. Or call it five. Shoe. Color bar car 25. And as you can see, that created correctly. And then we'll do insert into table dev.public.shoes values. Um, let's do what? Loafers. Loafers I don't think I need to have table in there. All right, and we can just do a select all from dev.public.shoes. And there we go. And that's it, connecting using SSH tunnel.